Okay, welcome back after the break. Uh, just before we went for our break, we were looking at uh, chapter uh, five, preaching. Okay, and we are looking at this point was the importance of rightly dividing the word and uh, maintaining sound doctrine. Uh, even as uh, we preach God's word, we need to, uh, you know, ensure that we are not just talking about some, uh, you know, stories, uh, man-made stories, um, or just some narratives or some stories that uh, are in the Bible, which we speak from our own understanding, uh, you know, or what we have heard before, um, or understanding of what people are sharing with us, uh, you know, but we need to, or in our own imaginations, uh, or just talk about things that are based on, you know, some truths that we've uh, heard before, or uh, some philosophies, but we need to teach the Word of God based upon, you know, biblical interpretation, uh, understanding that scripture passage, that verse in context, uh, you know, the cultural context, the literary context, uh, you know, why the uh, writer was writing that, to whom he was writing it, in what context he was writing it, historical setting, historical perspective. So all of these perspectives we need to uh, make note of, and then we need to correctly preach and teach God's um, uh, word and that is using biblical interpretation uh, you know and also interpret scripture in the light of the rest of other scripture not just taking one scripture passage uh, uh, and then speaking it out of context, uh, you know, because, uh, you know, uh, one scripture passage uh, or one verse uh, will always have uh, its interpretation or meaning in other scripture verses. So we need to look at other scripture verses and interpret this, uh, you know, uh, the passage that we are uh, wanting to preach or teach or the verse that we are wanting to preach or teach in the light of the entire scripture, interpret in the light of other scripture passages as well. And and, you know, we need to use biblical interpretation, which I think you will learn next semester or in the second um, year. So we need to rightly divide the word of God and teach God's word in its context, in its meaning, in what God has intended it to be uh, in the place that it is uh, and how God has intended uh, for us to, uh, uh, you know, uh, reveal the truth in his word the next thing is we need to build people precept upon precept that is what we read in isaiah chapter 28 verse 9 and 10 for precept must be upon precept precept upon precept line upon line line upon line here a little uh, uh, here a little there a little so you know how god works uh, or deals with us in revealing his truth or revela revelation is that he does not just give everything to us at one go Okay, he treats us like children when it comes to teaching us his truth or um, revelation. Even Jesus says, you know, uh, uh, I'm not uh, uh, revealing everything to you because you will not be able to understand. Uh, but, you know, he says the Holy Spirit will come and he will reveal uh, the other things. But I will, re Jesus says, I will reveal to you what is appropriate at this time, what is sufficient for you, what you will be able to understand at this time. And that is what he teaches. That is what he reveals. But there is, he says, there is more to come, which, uh, you know, the spirit of truth will reveal or make known um, to you. So even as children, you know, uh, when they go to different grades in school, uh, they they start learning math and English and science, but every year, you know, they learn much more uh, uh, on that same subject. The same way, you know, when we are pe teaching and teaching uh, uh, our audience, we need to know where they are in their journey of faith with God, where they stand in their spiritual maturity. And so we need to teach them as much as they can receive. Now, for example, you know, all of you um, here are learning about the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, uh, yeah, especially the in-person students are having supernatural hour every day. And then you go back to your church and you want to just teach people because uh, your so, you're desire is that, you know, they also know how much you know. So you want to teach them about the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, uh, about the supernatural. 
and you're and you're just teaching to them and it's all you see this just not being they're not able to receive it this going beyond above their head or uh, you know people don't uh, st stop coming for uh, the church services it's because you know they are not mature enough to come to that place where they're able to understand all of this so we need to see where people are the level of their understanding their walk with god bring them up to that level where you can start teaching them about uh, the gifts of the holy spirit so before you speak about the gifts of the holy spirit i'm just giving this as an example you know you can talk about who the holy spirit is okay we have the father son holy spirit so you can talk about the holy spirit the person of the holy spirit when you start talking about the holy person the holy spirit then you start you know they're receiving it they are coming to that place where they're able to understand then you as you're led by the spirit you can talk about the work of the holy spirit what the holy spirit does you know how he's a helper a guide then you can talk about the gifts so you know you take them from step to step you just don't go and you know start talking about the gifts of the holy spirit but you need to make known to them who the holy spirit is what is his work in their lives then move on to uh, the mature things so you know we also need to impart uh, truth upon truth uh, so that you know uh, little by little uh, reveal the truth to people so that they're able to uh, receive it digest it understand it you know uh, 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 appropriated in their own lives and then you can you know lead them to the um, uh, next step so even as they move on from one step to another they might have questions and doubts you know you clarify that and then you know they're in a better position to receive uh the same way like for children you know when children are uh, uh, one year two years you just don't give them a whole chicken piece or you don't give them a full you know fried fish um or you don't just uh, you know uh, give them a whole big meal which they have to eat by themselves you see the mother rooming all the thorns in the you know that is bones are that sorry not thorns bones in the fish <laughs> bones in the fish uh, you know uh, uh, and you know you remove uh, the chicken you remove the the shred the, the 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 meat you just give them that you don't give them the bones uh, uh just the same way we need to uh, do with people of god you know the way we teach them teach them truth upon truth slowly step by step the next thing is to bring a word in season um uh you know um uh, like we read in Isaiah chapter 50 verse 4 and Proverbs 25 verse 11. Can somebody please read those two verses, please? Isaiah 54 uh, chapter 50 verse 4 and Proverbs 25 verse 11. Isaiah 54. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as, as the learned. Proverbs 25.11 The right word at the right time is like a custom-made piece of jewelry. Thank you, Prince. Uh, amen. Uh, so here we see that, you know, we need to... Uh know the times and seasons that people are in so even as uh, you know, you're invited to preach in a in a church or in a in a in a group you know you can ask god god i do not know these people where they are in their walk with the you in their journey with you which season of life they are in you know or show me what message uh, or passage of scripture that i need to uh, take to and give me the message um, you know to preach to them and you know when you do that uh, you know you god gives you the shows you the passage you can even get a download of a sermon you know what god wants you to preach you know uh, when i have preached many often uh you know i'm just praying and i just receive a download means i just receive all the points what i need to preach and i just put it down and then i go to other scriptures and look at scripture study it and then you know uh uh, uh 
prepare my sermon. But, you know, I receive a download. I'm just saying it because, you know, we all can receive a download. We don't just receive a download from Google, but, you know, we can receive a download from God. He himself gives us, imparts into our hearts what we need to preach, the points. And I've seen those sermons are really very, very uh, powerful. So be sensitive to the areas God wants you to focus on, areas he wants you to build and strengthen people, and the uh, areas what he wants you to empower people in that specific season. And uh, he will, uh, you know, help you and guide you what to preach and uh, teach. And like we read in Proverbs chapter 25, verse 11, this, of course, it's from the Message Bible, put very beautifully a right word, the right time, which means a right sermon, the right teaching at the right time time is like a custom made piece of jewelry you know custom made piece of jewelry is something that uh, you design you want uh, you uh, envision it you see it you want these kind of stones these pearls um, these diamonds whatever you want and it's just made exactly how you want it so that and exactly to fit your neck or uh, ears or hands or whatever and it's just so perfect and uh, beautiful so that is how is a sermon when we preach it uh, to people in their context in their season uh, in whatever challenges and difficulties that you are uh, going through you know uh, the next thing is you know uh, even as we preach and teach we uh, you know want we are under pressure sometimes uh, to uh, to make known fresh revelations or the truth of god's word uh, to people uh, and we want to give people fresh and new revelations so sometimes god can give us fresh and new revelations when uh, we study his word when we take time to prepare you know god is faithful and sincere uh, uh, even as we are faithful and sincere he will impart fresh revelations uh, uh, to us we can preach it sometimes when we receive a revelation from other men and women of god which we've heard from other churches something that we have read um then you know you're not sure about it it's good to hold on to it for some time you know uh, uh, uh try to read about it from the whole of scripture see what scripture entire scripture is talking about it uh because um you know uh whenever there's a revelation that we receive uh it will have to go according to god's word god the standard is god's word and the other standard is uh the holy spirit the spirit and the word will agree with the revelation that's what we read in first john chapter 5 verse 7. so the holy spirit will also reveal if it's uh, something that is a revelation from god if it's not a revelation from god the holy spirit will uh, you know give it to us through promptings or steering our heart uh, there's no peace there's restlessness whatever but if you receive a revelation like this test it in scripture ask the holy spirit to, to the inner witness of the holy spirit uh, the voice of the holy spirit whatever you know to affirm if that revelation is the truth is the right uh, thing or you can also you know speak discuss it with other senior men and women of god and uh, then if you think that it is uh, the right revelation then you can release it or teach it to the people but sometimes if you teach a wrong revelation then it's very difficult for us to take back what we have uh, uh, taught the other thing we need to we can keep in mind is don't uh, you know be afraid to teach uh, you know go back on old treasures you know old topics that you have uh, or sermons that you have taught you know uh, there's always a new perspective that we can uh, bring okay in whatever we have written i know i've written this i've written the catalyst curriculum uh, i wrote it uh, in 2008 but now it's almost uh, you know almost 12 uh, plus years since i've written that catalyst curriculum so now when i'm teaching it and i was thinking oh i should have add, i should add this i should add this because there's so much of learning that i have also received in the last 12 years the same with uh, the children's church curriculum that i'm writing you know uh, when i look back on the old topics uh, you know i think okay i need to add this next time when i'm revising this topic this is what i need to write so it's always good back good to go back to old sermons revise it add new revelations and uh, uh, teach it to people okay uh, stay current uh, but avoid theological uh, digressions that means don't go away into you know uh, into uh, faulty teaching wrong teaching wrong doctrines um, 
you know, as ministers of God, we need to stay current uh, in the present truth. That means what are the things God is revealing in our present day? What is the move of the Holy Spirit? We need to study that. Uh, we need to see it in the light of Scripture. And if it's uh, it's according to what Scripture uh, says and it's according to what the Holy Spirit is leading us, then, you know, we need to preach and uh, teach about it. OK, so just to give you a couple of examples, uh, you know, uh, the truth about Holy Spirit uh, baptism and about the Holy Spirit, you know, um, in the early uh, 1900s, uh, you know, in the Azusa Street Revival, uh, people began experiencing the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and that led to the Pentecostal movement. Um, and, you know, uh, uh, in the Pentecostal movement in the early days, we see people you know, for days on and, you know, they were just praying, crying out to God to receive uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay, this is happening uh, in the 90s. OK, uh, 1900s. But in the recent uh, years, we've seen that, you know, we don't have to spend, uh, you know, days or months or weeks uh, or hours just, you know, tarrying with God for uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Today, we know that, you know, we can just share God's word and we can just uh, help people pray for them to receive the whole baptism of the Holy Spirit. It just happens uh, in, in a couple of minutes or within an hour's time. But we observe here that the body of Christ has grown uh, in its understanding of the truth of uh, Holy Spirit baptism and how to apply the truth. Okay, before they used to spend days on end or hours, but today we just have to spend an hour to teach about it and pray, and people are receiving the Holy Spirit, uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. To give an example from God's word in Acts chapter 18, verses 24 to 26, we see that Apollos uh, or uh, Apollos, who was you know a strong minister of God, uh, but he only knew the baptism of John the Baptist. So when he met with uh, this couple, Aquila and Priscilla, who were at Rome and ministering at Rome, but they had to leave Rome because the persecution, they came to Corinth and, you know, they met, they met Apollos. Uh, we see that they realized that Apollos, though he was, you know, preaching God's word, he was very outdated. He just knew till the baptism of John the Baptist. He did not know about, uh, you know, uh, the Great Commission, baptism, uh, uh, by fire and water, uh, Holy Spirit baptism, uh, the finished work of the cross, that is the, the good news of the gospel. And so what they do is they teach, um, um, you know, uh, they teach uh, uh, Apollos about this. And then we see that, you know, um, they explain to him more accu accurately about God's word. We read about this in Acts chapter 18, verses 24 and 26. And we also see that Paul did the same with uh, the believers at Ephesus in Acts chapter 19, verses 1 to 6. We read about this. So we need to stay current. Uh, you know, what's the move of God, what God is move, uh, God's moving, how the Holy Spirit is moving, uh, what people are experiencing in the body of Christ. Uh, we need to learn about that, read about that, know about it. And then we need to also preach and teach about it. But we need to be careful that and as we, you know, uh, look at the moves of God, you know, we don't go off uh, off tangent you know, but stay uh, to the doctrines that are revealed to us in scripture, uh, the theological truths uh, that are there. Um, uh, and even as we uh, talk about the moves of God and stay current in the moves of God, uh, we also need to, you know, give equal importance to the rest of the truths contained in scripture. If not, we can lead people astray, um, you know, uh, 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 sometimes we can overemphasize the truth uh, and not give importance to scripture. Sometimes, you know, if I overemphasize the truth and give it more importance than what scripture does, you know, it's dangerous. Uh, sometimes, you know, if we give uh, 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 import more importance to the truth than uh, what is contained in scripture, that can also lead uh, people um, astray. So, you know, what should be, uh, how can people uh, be led astray is, uh, you know, just to give you a couple of examples, when we overemphasize blessing and prosperity without talking about, you know, uh, sacrifice, giving, uh, contentment, then it's going to lead people astray. OK, uh, because the word of God says godliness with contentment is great gain. That's what Paul writes to uh, Timothy. 
Okay, so if you're just emphasizing on this on blessings and prosperity, but we're not talking it alongside with the truth in uh, the scripture that you know there uh, we need to also sacrifice, we need to give, uh, we need to be content. Then we can receive uh, blessing and prosperity. It can lead people astray. Another uh, area where it can lead people astray, an example, is when we emphasize grace over godly living, godly purity, and responsibility. Okay, so people take the grace of God for granted and they think whatever they do, you know, they're already saved, they're going to heaven, uh, great, God's grace is more than sufficient, he will forgive, but that is uh, misusing uh, God's grace. So we need to talk about grace, but also talk about it in the context of godly living, uh, purity, and our responsibility towards uh, uh, what God has uh, given uh, to us. Otherwise, we'll end up with talking about super grace, hyper grace, and lead people uh, astray. We can, uh, you know, also lead us people astray when, uh, you know, or when uh, we challenge people with what God's word says. For example, we deny the existence of heaven and hell. Uh, it can lead people astray, um, you know, um, uh, uh, we can teach people that, uh, you know, uh, there are many ways uh, to, uh, you know, for us to be saved. Uh, for example, people think, uh, you know, when they uh, come and take uh, uh, communion, you know, uh, they'll be saved, you know, but uh, we know that salvation is only true uh, faith in Jesus Christ. Okay, so there's no other way that we can be uh, saved. It's not by keeping rituals. It's not by giving uh, to church. It's not by doing good, or feeding the poor. It's not by giving money to the orphans, orphanages, or just taking a communion that you know is going to cleanse us of our sins. But uh, we receive forgiveness of sins only uh, by grace through faith. Okay, we can receive only salvation by grace to faith in Christ Jesus in what he has done uh, uh, on the cross. That is through repentance and receiving the forgiveness of our sins. And that should be uh, preached more clearly than uh, uh, other things. When we, do, when we talk about other things uh, and not talk about sin and forgiveness and salvation by grace to faith, uh, and I believe in Jesus Christ, then we are leading people uh, Astray. You know, uh, uh, if you're just talking about signs, miracles, and wonders uh, that should accompany our uh, preaching of uh, the gospel, and uh, but let us, uh, you know, not focusing on, um, you know, salvation of souls, then it is also leading people astray because we're, we are again uh, becoming uh, like the Old Testament, you know, keeping the law, uh, you know, doing by works. You know, salvation is not by works, by our good works, but it is by, uh, you know, our faith in uh, Jesus Christ. Okay, so not focusing just on signs, miracles, and wonders that can save people, uh, but it's the salvation of their souls that will bring about healing and deliverance. That will help them to see uh, miracles in their um, uh, life. Okay, so these are some of the things that, uh, you know, uh, that can lead people astray when we focus on... Uh, uh, you know, some of these things uh, uh, by overemphasizing the truth rather than giving more importance to what scripture says, then it can lead people astray. The other thing we need to, uh, you know, be aware of is, uh, you know, uh, when we listen, hear about different uh, cults in our own city or a, a cult group coming up, a cult church growing, people are just leaving the churches and going to that cult uh, church, then what we need to do is we shouldn't talk about uh, what is uh, what the cults are teaching, what is wrong, but we need to teach people the truth. Uh, when we teach people the truth, they will be able to apply the truth when they are, you know, uh, 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 facing uh, cults or uh, false taught teachings or false uh, doctrines. So like we read here in um, uh, John chapter 1 verse 5. Can somebody read that please? John chapter 1 verse 5. Chapter 1 verse 5. And the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. Thank you Sri Radha. So here what dispels uh, darkness it's light, right? It's light that dispels um, uh, darkness. So the only way that we can 
overcome darkness is by putting on the light or you know it's just by bringing a torchlight into a dark uh, in a in a dark place uh, in a dark environment so it's a light that dispels uh, darkness in the same way if you want to get rid of uh, wrong teachings and false teachings and doctrines don't mention those false teachings and doctrines and what they are teaching and going into those uh, what uh, their teaching is all about but what we need to do is to put out that false teaching and doctrines we need to amplify the truth just like uh, you know uh, to overcome darkness we we bring in the light the same way to overcome uh, false teachings and doctrines we don't highlight the false teachings and doctrines but we amplify the truth or we make the truth uh, known and we make the truth known in a plain uh, simple loud clear way and you know when we do that people uh, will be able to uh, differentiate right from wrong and uh, truth from uh, false teachings and uh, doctrine. So as ministers of God, as uh, people who are being trained uh, to, uh, to teach God's word, uh, you know, as Bible college students, it's our responsibility to protect people whom God has entrusted to us uh, from wrong doctrines. The best way to keep people grounded in the truth and, uh, you know, keeping them away from wrong teaching is to preach the word, preach the truth, uh, amplify the truth, uh, you know, and convince people of the truth. Rebuke, uh, rebuke means you know having arguments presented to convince the truth. Like we read in Second Timothy chapter two, uh, chapter four, verses two and four. Look at what uh, uh, Paul is writing to sec uh, to Timothy in Second Timothy chapter four, verse two and four. In verse two, he says, "Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with long suffering and teaching." So, how are we to teach the truth? We have to preach the truth, amplify the truth, convince people of the truth, and rebuke. Rebuke means not uh, you know uh, shout at them or judge them or condemn them and say listen to this truth and follow this truth. It's not that. It's like uh, you know we're, we're presenting arguments. Uh, in a convincing way about the truth so that people are convinced enough to know what is the uh, truth, okay? Uh, the next thing when we are preaching is no flattery, no exhort, uh, not don't exhort people, uh, uh, extortion, sorry, not exhort, extortion, don't extort people and no self-promotion okay uh you know uh, people use the pulpit for various reasons uh you know they use it to flatter people uh just to speak nice about the rich people in the congregation some ministers of god come some politician comes you know uh you know just flatter them speak high of them help make them stand up give them uh, places of uh, important uh, seats of uh, uh, uh in, in the church or in the hall that you're meeting uh, or sometimes you know we can even uh you know, use it for self-promotion, where we are promoting our own selves, uh, you know, talking about uh, how anointed we are, you know, we went and preached here and there, uh, you know, the places in the world that we, we preached, how many people, uh, you know, uh, received the gospel, how many people were healed uh, in the crusades, uh, how many crusades we conducted, um, how many books we wrote, how many songs we wrote, uh, you know, all this is uh, self-promotion. Uh, and the other thing is don't, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, rob people of their money. Okay, so, you know, sometimes when you're preaching or teaching, um, uh, you know, we can say, uh, you know, the Spirit of God is telling me that uh, 10 people here, uh, you know, are going to give in uh, one lakh uh, towards the work of uh, my ministry or my organization or uh, to my church. So I want those 10 people to uh, stand up and, you know, uh, we just forcing people and then, you know, 10 people feel compelled to uh, stand up. They stand up and then we say, you know, uh, take out everything that is there in your pocket, in your wallet or in your handbag. Uh, um, yeah, and then, you know, um, 
uh, or whatever jewelry that you're wearing, just give it uh, because this is what the Spirit of God is telling me. You know, this is uh, not right. This is not what God wants us uh, to do. You know, uh, uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, cheating people. This is uh, robbing them. It's uh, daylight robbery, so to say. Uh, you know, so don't force people to give, uh, uh, you know, whatever they want to give uh, in the offering bag. Uh, just invite them to give as uh, they want to for the Lord, the Lord's work, whatever they wish, whatever the Lord is putting in their hearts, just give it. And, uh, you know, um, uh, when we do that, uh, we see that, you know, God would uh, bless uh, the work that we are doing because we're not robbing or stealing people uh, we're not cheating them uh, but people are just giving out of their own heart as the spirit is leading giving us unto the lord and god will just bless that uh, you know a god our god is a god who blesses the little uh, like the five loaves and two fish is a good example that uh, we can uh, hold on uh, in our in our ministry in our own personal lives you know don't say okay i'm not working in this god wants you to minister in a specific way and you say i'm not going to work in this place because you know uh, i know god has called me here this is the place he wants me to be but i'm not going i can't be here um, because i'm not paid too much you know um uh, it's difficult for me so i'm going to leave but what we can do is we can just take that little to the Lord. And our God is a God who multiplies, a God who blesses, uh, you know, a God who's promised us that, uh, you know, for the priests, the Levites, they did not get a portion of the land. All the other tribes got and God told them, I am your portion. You know, just imagine when God is our portion, uh, we don't, we will not lack any good thing. And those who trust in him uh, will lack no good thing. Okay, so just, just uh, trust him for uh, your needs and uh, he will uh, just provide. I remember when uh, when I was in Bible college and I went for my internship and I was working in this organization uh, in Kolkata and, uh, you know, our uh, one of our teaching faculty came to meet me. The teaching faculty go and meet all the students uh, who are uh, ministering in various places. And then he asked me, how much do they pay you? So I told them uh, that they pay me just 250 rupees. So he says he was shocked. He said, how do you manage 250 rupees for a month in a city uh, as big as this and traveling and all of those things? Uh, so he said, you know, I will speak uh, to the director and say this is very less and he needs to pay you more. Uh, I said, no, please don't do that. It's almost, you know, I've completed uh, uh, five, six months here and just one more month to go and, you know, uh, God has provided my needs. He's taken care uh, of. I know I lack times at times because uh, Kolkata is a hot place. Uh, you know, sometimes traveling by the bus, I get down and the, the bus stop is just, uh, you know, it's just near that bakery where they have all of these cool drinks. And sometimes I'm so thirsty, so, you know, uh, I just want to have a cool drink, but I just don't have the money. Uh, sometimes just walking a long distance in the sun, in that heat. Uh, but I just told him, you know, uh, there, there are challenges, but I think this is what God is training me. Uh, and this is what I think, uh, you know, it's okay. I don't want you to ask because uh, money is not of importance. I don't want him to think that, you know, uh, I have complained to you and I'm here for money, but I'm here just to serve God. God is taking care of my needs. And I, I, can, I can't just tell you how wonderfully God just took care of uh, uh, my needs in that city, in that new city, for the first time going there, how uh, wonderfully he has uh, provided more than I could even ask, think or imagine. That is what our God can um, do. Okay, so don't um, uh, you know rob people of their money? Don't force them to give. Uh, don't engage. You don't use the pulpit for uh, self uh, promotion. Okay. Even when you're sharing your own personal life testimony, you know, ask yourself, why am I sharing this? What is my motivation for people to know how great I am, how anointed I am, how powerful I am? Uh, uh, why are you doing this? Are you doing it to bring, you know, so that God can be glorified, so that people can be, uh, you know, uh, encouraged, comforted, strengthened, uh, even as you uh, share your own personal life story so that God can receive all the glory and all. Okay. The next thing is don't give the devil pulpit time. Um, uh, you know, uh, if you read Nehemiah chapter eight, verse four and six, 
uh, we see the reverence that people uh, gave to the reading of the book of the law. So here is Ezra. He's taken the book of the law, not yeah, all of the common people don't have uh, the book of the law like we have the Bible in our hands in, in, in the Old Testament times. When he stood up, you know, uh, all the people, uh, and Ezra opened the book of the law, all the people stood up, they lifted their hands, they bowed their heads, they even fell prostrate on their faces to God. To, uh, to the ground. That is the reverence they gave uh, the word of um, God. So even as we preach and teach God's word, we need to know that we are standing there uh, in the place of God. We are assembling God. Uh, we are um, in the place uh, uh, where people are seeing Christ in, in and through us. Uh, so we are there not to promote ourselves, not to promote some a politician or to you know some political agenda uh, to promote a business that we have or not using the pulpit to get back at people in our congregation who don't like us or gossiping about us or talking bad about us it's a good time you know to use the pulpit time this pulpit space to you know space to uh, you know to clarify ourselves to uh, you know uh, to defend ourselves that is not the time to do it you know it's the place it's a holy time uh, where we're talking about God's holy word we need to uh, give reverence to God the time that people are giving to us to preach and teach God's word uh, and also proclaim it under the power of the Holy um, Spirit okay don't draw people uh, to yourself um, even as you preach and teach, you know, um, as it says in John chapter 7, verse 18. Can one of you please read that? John chapter 7, verse 18. John 7, 18. He who speaks from himself, himself seek his own glory. But he who seek the glory of the one who saw him is true. And and to uh, and unrighteousness is in him. Thank you, Nina. So here, you know, when we preach and teach, we don't preach and teach for our own self promotion, so that people love us. They we have a great fan following. You know, pe more people will come to our church. We have more supporters. Uh, but you know, when we preach and teach, it says we do it to seek the glory of the one uh, who sent us. Uh, so that when we do it in a way that's honoring God and brings him glory, you know, there is no unrighteousness that will be found in uh, in us. OK, uh, so when we preach and teach, you know, we should do so in a way that people will be drawn uh, to go after God. Uh, to desire to seek God, to love him, to worship him and love his word and not just uh, love us in return. OK. So uh, to be a true minister of God is one who desires that the Lord alone be glorified uh, and nothing of self to be promoted. The last point here is don't cause division and offense in the body of uh, uh, Christ. You know, when we uh, preach and teach, don't use this as an opportunity to get back at people, uh, you know, to cause when we get back at people that leads to division and strife. Uh, people can easily understand what you're saying, even though you're not saying it directly, you're saying it indirectly, they can catch it. Uh, that will lead to more division, more gossip, uh, more hatred and anger in the church. Don't use uh, the pulpit or the teaching time, the preaching time, uh, you know, to talk about other ministers, uh, men and women of God, other denominations, uh, to put them down uh, so that people come only to your church and only think you are the anointed man of God, you are the only uh, person who is called by God and others are all uh, devils. They don't use that for the, uh, uh, the pulpit time, uh, the preaching time, the teaching them for all of these things because when we do you know it uh, it will just bring about um, uh, division and uh, you know um, uh, and strife in the body of Christ as Paul writes the church at Rome in Romans chapter 16 verse 17 and 18 he says you know those who teach all these false doctrines are doing it uh, not to serve God but their own bellies, that means their own stomach, and they do it by their smooth words, flattering speech, uh, but with deception in their hearts. And they're doing it, uh, you know, um, uh, not with the agenda to lead people to Jesus Christ, but because, you know, people can follow them, they can, you know, get money from them, and, uh, you know, uh, they use flattering speech and deceive the hearts of people. 
okay that is the end of uh, chapter five any questions on this chapter excuse me ma'am yes uh, that is not question right the chapter it's about our uh, examination actually okay so, um uh, is it going to be based on only the three books I read till now or? Yeah, Sean, can I answer this question after class is over? Is that okay? Because it's just pertaining okay. to the online students. Is that okay, Sean? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Any questions uh, regarding Chapter 5? No, ma'am. Okay. Online students, anyone has any questions? If there are no questions, then we'll move on to chapter six, uh, anointing. Okay, uh, what what do we mean by anointing? Anyone has any idea? We talk about the anointing. What do we? What are we meaning? Any answers? We talk about the word anointing. What does it mean? Okay, thank you, Nina. Nina John says it's the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, anointing uh, basically means the presence and the power of the Holy um, uh, Spirit. You know, so, uh, you know, Paul reminds us that we are just earthen vessels. That means we are just mud clay pots. You know, we are so uh, weak, vulnerable anytime, uh, you know, mud pots are just uh, of not much value, right? But then uh, some, if you put gold in that mud pot, what happens? It is of greater uh, value. So, you know, uh, we are just earthen vessels, but it's the anointing in us. It's the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit uh, uh, that uh, is, uh, you know, through us, uh, which brings about, uh, which leads people to repentance of sins, uh, to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, to be saved and healed and delivered. Um, and, you know, science, miracles and wonders, all is happening not because of us. It's not because we are spiritually mature. It's not because we are uh, uh, very strong in the Lord or the Lord loves us more than anybody else. No, it's because of the anointing that is in us. And of course, the anointing comes, um, the level of anointing that flows out of our lives uh, depends upon our intimacy with God, our relationship um, with God. The, the amount of time you spend in your time and your fellowship, in your intimacy of building your relationship with God to, to prayer, worship, reading God's word, you know, greater the level of um, anointing. But the anointing does not mean that, you know, we are greater than the Holy Spirit or we are super spiritual, we are super powers, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, but it's just the Holy Spirit that is working in and through us. If it's not for the power of the Holy Spirit that is working in and through us, or the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that is his presence and power that is working in and through us, you know, we cannot preach or teach or, you know, uh, lead sinners to repentance. Uh, people's lives cannot be transformed. Uh, we can never see healing and deliverance. So never think that uh, it's the person who is doing it or it's us who is doing all of it. We need to always acknowledge that it is the work of the Holy Spirit in and through that uh, person. Okay, the anointing and gifts are given uh, to serve people, as we read in First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse fourteen; Second Corinthians chapter four, verse five. So, can somebody read that, please? Second uh, Corinthians, ma'am. No, no, 1 Corinthians 12, 7, 1 Corinthians 14, 12, and 2 Corinthians 4, 5. Okay, ma'am. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Even so, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. We do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your bond servants, for Jesus' sake. Thank you, Sean. So here we, in these three scripture passages, we learn that the gifts are given for the common good. Okay, it's the second thing we can learn is the gifts of the Spirit are given for the building up of the body of uh, believers. Um, 
and uh, it's not just given for one individual where one individual can be elevated above others but the third thing we can learn is that it's uh, the gifts of the spirit are given as a channel to which people are um, served okay so even as we flow in the gifts of the spirit we need to be mindful of this that the gifts of the spirit is given to us for the common good for the building up of the body of believers and it's also uh, it's a channel through which god's people are being um, so, so, you know, we exercise the gifts given to us uh, to build God's people and to expand his uh, uh, kingdom, okay? Uh, you know, even as we flow mightily in the gifts of the Spirit, in the anointing and the gifts, uh, sometimes we can feel that we are special people. Uh, and because we are special people, we are flowing mightily in the, in the anointing that people should serve us. But look at what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 20, verse 28. We know that Jesus had the spirit without measure. He just, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, he, he was just flowing mightily in all the gifts of the spirit. Jesus said, I did not come to be served, but to serve. So the more anointed and the more gifted we we are, you know, it puts us in that position where we are uh, to be more servant-like, uh, you know, to serve people and not be like lords or bosses or the super spiritual people where we're sitting around where people have to serve us, but we are in a place where we have to serve people because the gifts are given for us to edify, build, encourage, strengthen and serve the body of Christ, okay? Um, uh, you know, the other thing is a real you is who you are outside your gifts and your uh, anointing. Okay. We need to know that uh, our identity is not in, uh, uh, you know, how mightily we flow in the gifts, uh, how, you know, uh, the gifts of the spirit that we manifest, how many people are healed, what kind of signs, miracles and wonders that, uh, you know, God is bringing about uh, in our lives, uh, you know, but we need to uh, understand that it's all done because of the anointing, the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in us. And also, when we look at people who are uh, exercising the gifts of the spirit, the, the, the anointing, the uh, 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 the anointing is powerfully manifested in and through their lives you know we don't uh, worship the person we don't exalt them we don't give them that high place of prominence or the place of god we need to understand that it's the the power of the holy spirit that is you know through working through them that is bringing about all these signs miracles and wonders and uh, through whom god is using who God is mightily using and through whom God is mightily using to extend his kingdom and uh, to bring many uh, lives uh, to be saved. So that, so that identity should not become in uh, in our gifts and an anointing that's not, that is not right, but that uh, identity should be who we are in um, Christ. You know, we need to see ourselves as who we are in Christ. Um, you know, the real us is not when we are up there preaching or ministering. The real us is when we are facing the challenges in our lives. You know, what is our attitudes? Uh, you know, how we are uh, uh, retaliating to people who are gossiping, talking back, uh, bad, uh, ba uh, bad about us, uh, who are trying to, you know, be a hindrance in our lives, whether we are able to love them, forgive them, how we are treating our spouse, our children, our parents. Uh, our, our maids at home, the people who work for us, uh, that is who we really are. And for God, that is what matters more than, you know, what we really do or how we flow mightily in uh, the gifts and the, uh, the anointing. So uh, it's important for us to learn to walk in obedience. Uh, we need to walk humbly before God. Uh, you know, we need to keep our flesh under control. Uh, we need to guard our mind, what comes into our mind. And we also need to watch over our words. When we, when we are able to watch over all of these areas of our life, we walk in submission, in humility, in obedience, in humbleness, guard our minds, be careful with what we are saying. You know, uh, we are um, walking aligned to the will of God, then honoring God in the way that we live. We are feeding our spiritual nature. And then we see that the anointing flows in a greater 
uh, level. So our true identity is who we are in Christ. Our, not, our identity should never be based on a spiritual calling, our gifting, our anointing, the good works that we have accomplished. But our identity is who we are in Christ. Uh, as it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, we are his workmanship. We are created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So who are we? We are basically God's workmanship. We are God's handiwork. We are created in Christ. We are bought by his precious blood. We are washed by his uh, we are saints who are washed in his blood um, and hence we see ourselves in our who we are in Christ and our identity is not in our gifting, our calling or in our, or in our anointing. And also we need, to, when we see other people who are flowing mightly, we look at them, uh, at them uh, with the identity of who they are in Christ and not just their gifting, calling or their anointing, okay? Uh, the next thing is desire to be genuine, uh, desire the genuine, don't tolerate uh, imita uh, imitations. An example given here is from Exodus chapter 30, where God is, uh, you know, giving uh, the, the Israelites to make the anointing oil. So he's giving the proportions of the different mixtures, the different things that they need to use to make this anointing oil. And he's saying, you know, this anointing oil is only to be used in the tabernacle, over the priests, over the, the you know, uh, the uh, the utensils in the in the tabernacle, and it should not be imitated. Me means don't use the same proportion of this anointing oil to make anything for as creams or lotions or perfumes for your own flesh. There should be no imitation. The same way we see that you know the anointing oil that. Uh, God is referring to here in the Old Testament, and he's talking about uh, the, uh, uh, it to the Israelites to make it for as anointing oil for the tabernacle. You know, this anointing holy oil in the Old Testament was a type of the anointing of the Spirit in the New Testament. It's actually pointing out to the anointing work of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. So what do we learn? We learn that the holy anointing oil uh, should you know, uh, was not used for uh, for ordinary, you know, uh, fleshly purposes. So also we need to understand that, uh, you know, when uh, uh, we do things uh, led by the Spirit, you know, we should not do things out of the flesh. Sometimes uh, the Holy Spirit is not leading us to say a word of wisdom, knowledge, or prophecy, uh, but we are so pressurized to say something because others are saying it, and then we can do it in our own flesh, and that is wrong, okay? Because here, we cannot make an imitation. God is saying we can't make an imitation. We need to treat this with reverence. Uh, so also the anointing of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament, okay? The anointing is pure. Uh, but it's expressed through human vessels, uh, and uh, we are human vessels, we are not perfect, uh, but we need to understand that, uh, you know, sometimes uh, uh, the manifestation that comes, or the anointing that flows out through uh, these human vessels who are not perfect uh, can also be contaminated with the uh, fleshly works, um, and hence, you know, we need to, uh, you know, discern prophecies. We need to go back when we receive a prophetic word, test it with scripture, uh, with uh, the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, uh, test if it is, uh, you know, coming from the Holy Spirit is accordance with the will of God, or sometimes it can just be made out of fleshly manifestation uh, when the Spirit is not involved, when the Spirit is not guiding that person. Um, and also we need to test those uh, uh, prophecies, uh, but we need to be very careful that, you know, uh, when we are uh, moving with uh, uh, in a place where others are prophesying, sharing a word of wisdom or, uh, uh, you know, a word of knowledge, we're not receiving anything, just keep quiet, you know, uh, don't say anything for the sake of saying, uh, uh, you know, saying something from your own intellect, your logical understanding, reasoning about what you know about that person, because that is a fleshly made manifestation, and that will not uh, bring about the plans, the purposes 
uh, the the will of God for the person that you're revealing it to, and that is not honoring in God's sight, and that is not what God is pleased with, and that is a sin as well, uh, because uh, God asks us not to make any imitations of something that is holy, and we can't imitate uh, uh, things and say it is from the spirit. Uh, you know, when you don't receive anything, just keep quiet. Uh, just say, I've not received anything. It's okay. We are not, uh, you know, to be always giving a word of wisdom or knowledge or prophecy. But when you receive something, just say it when it comes from, when you feel sure 100% that is what the Holy Spirit is telling you to say. Okay. We'll continue um, this chapter in the next class. Um, Sorry, we moved three minutes beyond time. Anyone has any questions? So Sean is asking a question. Anointing also means to be chosen by God for a particular purpose. Um, uh, no, uh, you're, when, when you're chosen for a specific, we learned about this, right? When we're chosen for a specific function in the body of Christ, God gives us the, the gifts and the grace and the anointing. Yes, he gives us the anointing to fulfill uh, that calling uh, uh or the vision or the purpose that he has uh, called us for so we will look at that in this chapter we will study that uh sean. Ma yes ma'am um it's about the examination yeah one minute sean i'm coming to that i've not forgotten yes uh any other questions anyone has any questions okay before we uh uh, you, do you have a next hour or are you free the next hour? First, yes. It should be free, ma'am. Are you sure? Uh, yes. Huh? No, the thing is, ma'am completed our portions. I'm not sure. So it should be. Okay. Uh, if it's okay, if you can, one of you can just ask her, then I can even take the third hour. Because there is some more portions that I need to complete. Is it okay with all of you? We can go for a break and come back, and then we can go for a no. break and come back, and then maybe uh, can one of you please just uh, check quickly and come back, and then uh, okay, ma'am. I'll ask, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, online students, do you have any? questions about the assessment you just have one more assessment right and if you have any questions regarding the assessment online students you can please unmute your mics and speak uh, it's good to hear some of your voices Okay, I just hear from Viku who says no. What about the others? Uh, it would be nice if the online students are more engaging in class. Uh, you know, maybe some of you can just unmute your mics, read the scripture passages, uh, you know, just unmute your mics, ask questions, any doubts, anything that you feel you've not understand, understood, please uh, speak because, you know, I basically get no response from the online students and uh, sometimes I'm wondering whether you're out there, you're able to understand, whether I'm going fast. Uh, please feel free to give any feedback regarding the class uh, because sometimes I'm just, you know, just teaching, moving from one point to another. Uh, so if there's anything that you can give a valuable feedback and suggestion how we can improvise the lectures, the classes, the assessments, uh, please feel free to write. You can post on the stream page, you can unmute your mics and even talk after class and we could uh, do that. Okay, so it, class can be more engaging uh, and that'll be good. So you are okay with your assessments? You just have one more to go, online students? Um, Pastor, I thought it was two more, not right? One we, we have two to more. turn in today. 
Yeah, and another one which is going to come the yeah, next so week. Today right? you turn in yes. one end. Yeah. One. Yes. yes. One. Yes. Okay. Yeah, but uh, we. Are, I mean, the, this today is kind of online for everyone, so I think that's when we can unmute, right? But in the normal case, we can't, isn't it? I mean, yes, when, the when normal have... case is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the normal case is yes, you couldn't. But then in the last uh, two classes we had made, when I was doing it in person, uh, we had made a facility where the online students could also unmute them and speak. Yeah. Okay. We had yeah, yeah. So yeah. Sometimes, so yeah, that's easier because by the time sometimes we text, it takes time. Mm -hmm. and then, <laughs> so the, it's yes. nice if then we can unmute, but I thought in the normal case we don't. But today, of course, when we have the combined class, yes, we can unmute and speak. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Nina. I had completely forgotten about that. But uh, yes, the two uh, classes prior to what, you know, when I was teaching in person, we had made that facility. Uh, for uh, students to also uh, unmute their mics and speak. Yeah. Is Sean back? In person, students. Okay, thank you, Sean. So, okay, is it okay for the uh, other online students? Can I take the next hour as well? Uh, that is from 10, uh, sorry, from now we go for our break. So it will be from 11.10 to 11.50. Is that okay, online students? Okay, thank you, Jaychin. What about the others? Okay. Okay, so then we'll, uh, you know, go for our break and then we'll come back at 11.10 uh, and then we'll start class, okay? Thank you, everyone.